Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on hiring a coach. We are definitely delighted to have you here and very much interested in making sure we answer your questions. Because of the number of people on the call, everyone is in mute mode. So what we're going to ask you to do is when you have a question, please type it into the question panel. I'll work very hard to cover it as we go through the information. And then uh, if it's something that's outside of the scope, then I'm going to either pause or I will save it to the end and we'll address them there. Uh, this is really about information for you and what makes sense for you. So our topic today is hiring a coach. When you are thinking about hiring a coach, what are you thinking about? What are you considering? So let's cover our agenda. What information do we want? Well, the first thing you do when you go to hire a coach is decide what you want yourself. So we'll talk about that. Then you learn about the coach. Who are they? Is it a good fit? And then the third area is let's set up some questions for you to ask your coach. And that way you make it easy for yourself to start narrowing down who's the right fit for you. So beginning with knowing what you want. When you think about coaching, there is coaching in so many different arenas with so many different areas of focus. The first consideration you're, you're going through is what kind of a coach are they? What type of coaching do they do? So we talk about people that do professional coaching, career coaching. We talk about personal coaching. Some people call it life coaching. There's business coaching, and there's team coaching. So these are different areas of focus. Which one's the right one for you? When we talk about professional coaching, very often we're talking about people in the workplace. So whether your company is paying for the coach, you're paying for the coach, or you are the company hiring a coach for someone, that's the kind of coaching we're talking about when we say professional. In terms of career coaching, what comes to mind for most people first is the idea of finding that career, finding the ideal job, etc. Career coaching is also about what is your career path, where do you want it to go, and sometimes choosing to transition between different careers. So there are a couple of areas within the career coaching. Personal coaching might be something like uh, we've had people that talk about ADHD coaching, or we've had people talk about work-life balance. They'll talk about, hey, what legacy am I creating with my life? There are a lot of different arenas in terms of personal coaching. Business coaching, uh, when you hear that term, is typically geared toward the owner uh, or the people running a small to mid-sized business. And then team coaching, just like it sounds, when you have a, a team working together within an organization, team coaching makes sense. So those are a couple of general categories. Now let's go a little bit deeper in terms of knowing what you want for a coach. Think about your own purpose. What's significant to you? What are your reasons for actually hiring a coach? Explore this for a second. If you think about, hey, what's important to me? How come I'm considering a coach? One of the big areas that comes up is developing skills. Well, even that is really broad. So dig a little bit deeper for yourself. When you say, OK, I want to develop my own skills, what skills do you want to develop? What skills are significant for you in what you're doing? Or perhaps you're getting feedback in the workplace and they're saying, hey, these are skills to work on for you. So as you explore what you want, what your purpose is, and you think, OK, I'm going to develop my skills, start listening. Be specific. Are there skills in public speaking that you want to develop? Because that's one type of coach. If your skills are how you present yourself or brand yourself, that's a different set. If you want to work on communication skills, that's a different expertise. So in terms of coaching, be really specific on what you want out of it. Developing skills is one big area. Another big area is for transition. 
Now, what's interesting about the word transition, we say, oh, I want a transition coach. Well, there's so many different meanings behind transition. For some, it's I'm transitioning from living in one part of the world to living in a different part of the world. But somebody else might consider, well, I'm transitioning from school to the workplace or from the military to civilian life. Uh, so there's a broad range there. Uh, in the workplace, very often, it's transitioning into a new role or position, uh, whether it's a parallel move uh, across different industries or as you're moving forward with your career, in climbing the proverbial ladder, uh, transitioning into new roles and higher levels of responsibility. So when you think transition, have a sense of what it means to you. Another area to consider in terms of your own purpose for coaching is the sounding board. This is one of the top reasons a lot of people will hire a coach. They want somebody that listens to them while they talk out loud gives it back to them, rephrases it to them. Now, what does that do for you? Well, when you talk it out, it becomes clearer for you. When somebody rephrases it back to you, you're saying, okay, so that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what that sounds like. And it makes you think about it at a deeper level. Beyond that, when you have a coach that's serving as your sounding board, they're going to expand your thinking. They're going to challenge your thinking. So they ask questions that probe, that have you considering it from different perspectives. As you move up and are at a higher level, having a coach serve as a sounding board is a phenomenal tool in terms of your own results and outcomes. Another reason people have a coach is to focus in motivation. Sometimes we get to the point where we say, okay, so what is my purpose? What am I doing? What do I get excited about? Or the other possibility is I realize I'm doing some things that are less than effective for me. I would like to do things that are effective for me, that really do make a difference. So having someone that works with me on discovering, okay, what is going to be more effective? What's important to me? And how am I going to be excited about it? What does get me there. So focusing motivation is an area. Another one is addressing derailing behaviors. Now there's an interesting caveat to this, of course, because here's what happens. When you yourself are hiring a coach for yourself and you recognize the derailing behaviors, the first thing I'm going to say is more power to you. Kudos to you for recognizing that, for knowing it, and for being aware of it. That means that when you go find a coach, you're going to find somebody who's got that expertise for you and is going to share that expertise with you in a way that is meaningful because it's through perspective. So derailing behaviors is, hey, I know I'm hurting myself and my own opportunity. Now the other possibility is you work for an organization and you're actually going to hire a coach for a different employee. And the reason that the employee is going to have a coach is because of derailing behaviors. So then it becomes the whole dilemma of, okay, if we tell them they're going to have a coach, uh, they're going to feel like it's a problem or there's something wrong. Uh, they may even resent having a coach. So how it's presented to that individual is incredibly significant. And on the flip side of that, when you hire a coach, are they prepared to deal with that? So, if the employee says, oh, gee, I don't like this, you're making me go to coaching because you don't like what I'm doing and they feel attacked, is your coach prepared to handle that? So when you start defining your purpose for coaching, what does that do for you? That helps you so that when you are interviewing a coach, you have a sense of, does this fit? Is this the right coach for my scenario, for my situation, for what I'm looking for? Uh, and I do have a question in the question panel. So it is, can I give an example of a sounding board uh, in, who would benefit from it in the workplace? And here's what I'll share with you. Very often, uh, people that are in a position of decision making uh, or of creativity and design like the idea of a sounding board. The reason for that 
if they talk with people within an organization, everyone knows the culture, that kind of thing, and the politics play into it. When they have a coach from outside the organization sort of the sounding board, then what happens there is that person is totally free to challenge the thinking, to turn it upside down and inside out, and to consider it from different perspectives because they really are outside of it. Uh, sometimes it's even they don't know anything about what you're doing, so those questions they ask make you really clarify it and, and be certain in terms of what you're doing. So great question. Thank you for that. I, excellent question. Uh, on, okay, another question here on the derailing behaviors. When a coach is hired to come in and address the derailing behavior in the, in the workplace, what happens is if the person that is going to be coached knows, oh, they're hiring a coach because they think I'm a problem and they resent it, that coach going in has different ways of coming at it. A coach who has experience in that arena will sit down with that person and say, okay, what's your understanding of this coaching relationship? What's your understanding of the reason for it? Okay, given that your employer hired me to come in and work with you, uh, and given that they want to address this behavior, I'm going to ask you, what do you want out of it? What do you want from the coaching relationship? And then I'm going to talk with that individual about confidentiality and what I do and do not disclose to their employer. Now, what that does is start to create a shift with that person. They start realizing, oh, I have an opportunity here to actually choose what I get out of this coaching relationship and to benefit from them. It's about taking the time to create their buy-in to the coaching process to ensure how effective you are with that coaching process. So the idea of a coach that has worked with people that have those derailing behaviors in the past and developed that level of trust with that individual so they buy into the coaching process and make progress, that's significant to you if you're hire the one hiring the coach for them. So great question. Thank you. So when you know your own purpose, there's a little bit more in terms of what you want out of the coaching relationship. So we talked about types of coaching, your own reasons for having coach, what you want to work on. Another area to consider is what coaching process is going to work for you. So let's explore this for a moment. First off, we have what we call whole person coaching versus a specific focus only. And there are definite pros and cons to each of these approaches. So let's talk it through for a moment. When you say whole person coaching, that really is considering what's happening for this person in different areas of their life. So the thinking on one side is, well, that's inappropriate. This is workplace. It's job related. Uh, it's company time. We're not here to talk about their relationships or their health or their financial issues or whatever else. And so you get that full of thought. The other thing that happens is people say, well, when we focus specifically on the job, then we get more accomplished more efficiently, and that individual is a little more comfortable. They don't have to go into anything personal or, or too touchy-feely. So you get that consideration. On the flip side of it, you have the consideration that, OK, if I'm an individual and I'm going to have a coach because of whatever's going on on the job, well, think about it this way. Whatever is happening in my life comes to work with me. If I'm struggling with relationships, <laughs> that's part of who I am and <laughs> I take it to work. If I am struggling financially, if I have health issues going on, whatever it is, so I am a whole person. Now, interestingly enough, Harvard Business Review actually did a study on this. And when coaches brought in to work with somebody, and the intention is the workplace and the job focus, 76% of the time, personal issues do get addressed. And that could only well, make sense to bring that with us. So for you yourself, if you're hiring your own coach, you have your own pros and cons. And the question is, OK, if I am going to do whole person coaching, how much time is spent on all of those other areas? 
And that's a big question, too. People say, well, look, I really want coaching just for this one area. Okay, so if we're going to coach just on that one area, what happens if we start with a coaching session or two, really understanding the individual, what's happening in all areas of their life, so that we have that awareness of all the influencing factors and what really does motivate them and drive them. And we spend a couple of sessions getting that whole person perspective and focus. And then at that point, move into a specific focus. Okay, now that we have the understanding of the whole person, we're going to talk about this job, uh, this skill development, this transition, this decision-making process, whatever it is, and then shift into that focus. So this is a consideration, whether you're the one hiring the coach or you're the one you're you're asking for yourself or the one hiring the coach for someone else. Now, another area to consider is whether the coach is going to come in with an agenda or whether the coaching sessions are free-flowing. So here's what happens. When we say, okay, I want to develop a specific skill, sometimes it makes sense to have a coach who has a process in terms of that skill, that particular focus. Uh, one example I think of is I know a lot of career coaches that literally have an agenda of things to work through in terms of deciding where you're going with your career. And it makes a lot of sense. And then I know other coaches who come in and say, okay, what do you want to accomplish? What's your focus right now? Uh, so there's pros and cons to each. And, of course, you can go anywhere in between it can be, okay, our general agenda is this particular skill, and there are a lot of pieces that come up within that in terms of what's happening. So knowing the coaching process and deciding factors for you, think about it before you even begin interviewing someone. So, for example, are you going to be looking at internal coaches or external coaches? So if you are in a company, and you want a coach for yourself, or you're going to hire a coach for someone else, where's that coach coming from? And there are pros and cons to internal and external coaches both. If someone is an internal coach, that means we're an employee of the company. It means they know the company culture. They're aware of what's happening. They know the different players. Uh, they know the business of the company. There's a huge benefit there. Internal coaches are often more cost effective. On the other hand, an external coach is somebody from outside the company. They're an independent business person. They are hired specifically for the purpose of a coach. Now, the advantage there, well, because that's what they do as a business, they focus completely on developing their expertise as a coach. Another thing that occurs is they are outside the company politics. And oftentimes, for the person being coached, that changes their comfort level. They feel like, okay, I have more freedom talking here because this person is outside of my organization. Uh, so they think about confidentiality, they think about records that are there, et cetera. Uh, other times, as you get back uh, to refer to the earlier question on the sound board, sounding board, when you get somebody at a high level looking for a sounding board, they want an external coach because they want a different perspective, somebody outside at the current culture and thinking. So decide whether you're considering internal coaches, external coaches, or in many cases, you're considering both. In most organizations, both are used. Uh, coaching programs will tap internal coaches and external. Of course, another deciding factor is going to be price point and then experience or expertise. And sometimes it's almost a either or. What's my highest priority? Am I most concerned about how much I'm going to spend on this coaching engagement, or am I most concerned about the coach's experience and expertise? And I'll share an interesting statistic with you. The number one indicator of success in a coaching relationship is the rapport between the coach and the client, that relationship itself. So very, very significant. Another good question, how does an organization measure the effectiveness of a coach, particularly if they're internal? And, and I love that question. 
return on investment or measuring effectiveness of the coaching process has both qualitative measures and quantitative measures. In terms of a qualitative measure, uh, sometimes it's looking at just rating. Hey, these are the skills I want to develop. Here's where I think I'm at now. Here's where I'm at afterwards. Uh, sometimes we go even further than that. And there's a 360 assessment of an individual before coaching and then after coaching, and that is helping determine their skill development in that arena. If you're looking for examples of qualitative measures, it might be, gosh, we have really high turnover <laughs> in this department, and we want to reduce the turnover, and so our approach is going to be to coach the leaders in that department. And at that point, you start tracking the turnover before coaching and after coaching, and you, would sum, you do the math. What's the cost of that turnover, and so what is that doing and changing? Uh, a lot of fabulous studies that give different examples of the way it's measured. The question in and of itself, I think, is part of the answer. How are we going to measure the effectiveness of an internal coach? And exploring that when you are thinking about having a coach, whether they're internal or external. So excellent question. Thank you. Moving into the area of learning about the coach. Okay. I've decided what my reason for hiring a coach is. I know what I want. Now I'm going to start learning about the possible coaches that are out there for me. So set yourself up. What information do you want to know about a potential coach? So a few examples, very specific. One would be, what's their training? And when we say training, we mean coach-specific training. And there are a lot of people with a lot of expertise in different arenas that do and do not understand what coaching really is about. So ask about their training. What's their level of training? And this becomes a question as well, because there are coach certification programs that are a couple of hours online, and that person is a certified coach. So is their training approved by the International Coach Federation? It's a really great question to ask. Uh, find out where they got their training, have a comfort level with that. Uh, oftentimes you're asking, are you a member of the International Coach Federation? Now, coaching currently is what we call an uncontrolled industry or profession. Anyone can be a coach. You can turn up a business card, hey, I'm a coach. ICF is the gold standard in coaching. So when people are aware of the core competencies that are published by the International Coach Federation, when they talk about uh, membership in that or continuing education with the ICF, that's significant. And, of course, the Code of Ethics. So the International Coach Federation publishes a Code of Ethics for coaches. Now, for external coaches, you definitely want to be asking that question. What's your Code of Ethics? <laughs> what does it mean to you? And, and have that awareness. For an internal coach, the big question there becomes, okay, how are we handling ethics within our organization? So I'll give you an example. If somebody joins the International Coach Federation, first off, there's a combination of these things. To be a member, they have to have 60 hours of training. Well, okay, that tells you something in terms of them being a member. The next thing, when they become a member, they have to subscribe to the ICF Code of Ethics, agree to abide by it, and agree to be held accountable to it. That means that if somebody has a complaint about that coach, they go to the ICF and actually launch that complaint. And the ICF has a process to investigate the complaint and has a process for taking action on it and consequences. So that's a great awareness. Very, very significant. Now, what do you do when you have an internal coach? Because the internal coach, uh, very often, for example, will be part of the human resource department. And they have one set of obligations to the employer in terms of record keeping. And then they have the consideration of, oh, in coaching, we talk about the information between the coach and the client being confidential. Well, if there are records in, in the human resource file, then that starts changing the level of confidentiality. So having that clearly defined, if you're going to use an internal coach, 
defining that and having that discussion between the coach and the client ahead of time is very, very important. With an external coach, it's asking them, what's your code of ethics? How are you using that? So these are initial questions, just setting it up. Beyond that, start asking the coach about their process. So we talked about whole person versus a specific focus. Some coaches come in and they actually have, you know, here's what I do when I first start a coaching relationship, and then I go here and here in terms of establishing it and setting this up for success. Uh, other coaches come in and they say, well, I'm going to work you through my curriculum. Or a different coach might come in and say, well, I'm going to find out what's most appropriate for this individual. And it may be we use a curriculum, and it may be we use a, a process that I've got in place or some sort of a blend. So you want to ask the coach and talk to them about their process. It's something worth learning. Another area to learn about are the skills of the coach. And the skills are going to be based on a lot of their background information, their own experience. So learn about those things. To set you up to learn about these different areas, let's go through a list of questions. And this might be helpful if you are looking at hiring a coach, grab a pen and a paper and write these questions down. What do you want to ask? So the first question you might ask somebody is, what is your related experience? And when I say related, whatever it is I'm hiring that coach for, what's their experience related to that? It may be I want somebody who has industry-specific experience, if I'm looking for a coach in personal areas, what's their experience with that area? If I'm looking for a career coach, what's their experience there? Somebody who's a sounding board, whatever it is. What is their experience that's related to it? Professional experience and personal experience. The next question, ask them, what is your training for coaching? And find out, very, very important question, know whether they have coach-specific training because that tells you their understanding of the role itself. Ask them, what is your code of ethics? And it may be they've already told you. If they haven't, do ask the question. And then ask them, what is your coaching experience? Now, do keep in mind, there are a lot of coaches that have years of experience in the professional world that then go through coach training and formalize some of what they've been doing all along. In other words, many of their roles have had coaching involved within it. Uh, so explore that as well. And then talk about, yes, coaching experience. A few more questions to ask. Ask them, what is your coaching philosophy? So for example, do they come in with the perspective that the individual really is their own best expert? And when that individual explores it for themselves and decides for themselves, they own it and buy into it and follow through. That would be an example of somebody defining it. Another question, what are your strengths as a coach? When people go into coaching, they define niche areas. Hey, this is where my expertise and experience really support my effectiveness as a coach. So ask them about their strengths as a coach. And ask them, given what I want, based on the thinking you did, we covered initially in this program, you decided what you wanted out of the coaching relationship. So share that. Given that this is what I want, what is your approach? Because at that point, it gives the coach an opportunity to work with you in co-creating the relationship and establishing an approach in coaching that's going to be effective for you. Because coaching ultimately really is about you getting the results. What are your resources? If you are going to take the next step, where do you go? So I want to offer a couple. First off, the Center for Coaching Solutions. The website is just like it sounds right there, Center for Coaching Solutions. The mission statement is the resource for coaching results. So whether you are looking for a coach, you want help finding a coach, whether you want help with a coaching program so that you have internal coaches, they're a resource for you. Another resource is the Center for Coaching Certification. Mission statement there, enhance your coach training experience with quality, professionalism, and support. 
so that if you do want to have a coaching program, you want some coaches that have got training. Yeah, here's something that's significant about this. There are studies that show having internal coaches trained outside of the organization leads to a higher level of effectiveness in the coaching engagement. So let me give you the website for the Center for Coaching Solutions and let you know if, whether you're looking for a coach. And the nice thing about this is that you have the opportunity for them to match your client, the person who's going to be coached, with a coach that's going to make sense for them. So that matching opportunity. I do want to give each of you something. You've been here. You're interested in this. You want your, your information. What we want to offer you is a free 30-minute consultation. So let me give you choices. First off, if you are interested in hiring a coach, I'm going to recommend you speak with Catherine. She does business development. This is her area. If you are interested in training coaches, then have a conversation with me. I want to make myself available and be helpful to you. So how do you get a hold of us? Well, let me provide our information, Catherine's direct phone number, email address, and the website for the Center for Coaching Solutions. And then below that, I've got my direct phone number, email, and the Center for Coaching Certification website. Now, cognizant of uh, the time here, I do realize we scheduled 30 minutes and we are there. I do want to say thank you very much for all of you for being here, for your interest in this information. We definitely look forward to being of service to you. And I, I realize that some of you do have other things scheduled. I'm already getting notes in the question panel. So I do want to say thank you as well. We definitely look forward to being of service to you. Do let us know how we can be helpful. Uh, and then those of you that have to go goodbye to you, those of you who are hanging around, just want to let you know that I'm going to hang around too. I want to be here to answer your questions. So whatever additional questions you have, uh, please type those in. And we're going to hang around as long as you're here and answer those questions. So one that's come in already. How do you develop management support for creating a coaching culture? And that is a fabulous question. Thank you so much for that. So we do want management to buy into the concept of coaching in the workplace. Uh, and when we say coaching culture, sometimes it's having a coaching program with internal and or external coaches. Sometimes it's also about developing coaching skills for people that are in a management or leadership role so that they take that approach in doing their work. It's going to start with the buy-in. And how do you create buy-in when you're setting up that culture? It's about the conversations you have. So of course it starts with the high-level leadership in an organization. And very often what, is, what does that group want? They want to know, how do we know this is going to work? And so what I'm going to recommend to you is literally do some research. If you simply Google ROI, ROI on coaching, return on investment on coaching, you will find there are a multitude of studies and resources that talk about the return on investment for having a coach and for coaching programs. So it's a fabulous opportunity to start garnering from the statistics that you can put together and present. The next part of the conversation is simply talking about what's happening within your organization. So as an organization, are you tracking turnover? Are you tracking employee engagement? Are you tracking employee productivity? So going to upper level management and saying, OK, here's what we've got right now. Here's what's normal in our industry in terms of employee engagement or productivity. And here's our game plan for us to move ourselves forward so that we are at the top of our industry in those areas. And so setting it up gives them the information on it, gives them the reason for it. Here's how come it makes sense within our organization to start having those conversations. Now, increasingly, the good news is people are aware of coaching and they're aware of the benefits of coaching. 
uh, because that conversation is becoming easier and easier. Now, once you have the conversation at the upper management level, you want that spreading throughout the organization. So it's talking to people in the leadership role throughout the organization, managers, supervisors, department leads, et cetera. So having those conversations. And then ultimately with the employees themselves. Uh, and the follow-up question here, that's a great follow-up. So if I want an internal coaching program, what are the components? So just briefly, an internal coaching program includes starting from people that are literally certified in coaching. They've gone out and gone through the training uh, and have that. So they're the start of it. Then what they're doing is either uh, training others on some of those coaching skills or they're serving as the coaches or both. Uh, then you're looking at do we want all internal coaches, do we want some external coaches, what is it that's going to make sense for us? And of course, part of it is time commitment for people. Part of it is the cost, investment, et cetera. Uh, frequently, we see in organizations that the higher the level of uh, management and leadership, uh, the, the more likely you have an external coach. We also see external coaches coming in and working with high potential uh, leaders that are transitioning into a higher level role serving as founding boards. Internal coaches are very often used uh, for the entry level people. They're used for derailing behaviors. And we also see a lot of internal coaches with the high potentials, developing them as future leaders within the organization. And depending on the corporate culture, you'll have internal coaches that are coaching your high level executives. So it's really determining what's a good fit for us in this organization and what's our balance. How much outside training do we want for coaches? How much inside training? How many external coaches do we want? How many internal coaches? And to develop a balance that makes sense for your organization. So hopefully that's covering a couple of those questions that came in there. I am getting uh, more of the thank yous and, and people heading out, so I definitely appreciate that. Uh, if you have other questions and I happen to have missed it, uh, please either feel free to get a hold of me directly uh, or if you want to type it in now. I think I've covered everything we have uh, and I do want to be uh, respectful of everyone's time. So again, thank you all for being here. I appreciate your participation and certainly we look forward to being of service. So thank you all.